Welcome into the Atlanta Football Party. Coming up on today's show, all that matters is the dogs got out healthy. This is Locked On Sports Atlanta, and it's time for the Atlanta Football Party. Only on Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, welcome to the Atlanta Football Party, your home for the best Georgia Bulldogs football talk. It's local talk you won't find anywhere else, but right here on Locked On. I am your host, Tanitra Batiste, and I have here with me Brent Rollins and Jarvis Davis. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more right now. New customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150. If your team wins, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. The Atlanta Football Party is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Now, number one, Georgia is getting set for yet another showdown with number eight Alabama in the SEC championship game this coming Saturday. We'll talk about it when we go between the hedges and tell you about the next up. But first, let me take a step back and get you guys takeaways on the 31-23 win over Georgia Tech last Saturday. Brent, what were your takeaways from that game? One, they got through the game injury, for the most part, injury-free. You sat down four, four basically starters. You, you know, you basically, and you could see from a play calling perspective, they saw, hey, we can run all over Georgia Tech. We're just going to do that. We're going to get through this game, win, get home. So that's sort of one, got through it. Two is just a step back and an appreciation for three straight 12 and 0 regular seasons. The insanity of that cannot be understated. Yeah. Like just, it's nuts how amazing that is, especially when you're dealing with 18 to 22 year olds and ebbs and flows of that to maintain that level of consistency. It's Talent, coaching, leadership, motivation, mm-hmm. all it's everything combined. It can't be understated how amazing it is. Yeah, I heard it. I heard someone mention this before. Like it takes you back to the Nebraska days of domination and that dynasty with Tommy Frazier, but maybe even better than that, because it's still and counting. Like we we still have more opportunities to see Georgia do even better, kind of outdo them. And I think the other thing that I heard this morning, which I thought was very cool, Brett, was the approach that Kirby Smart and that organization have, which is basically we're going to kind of, for lack of a better term, police ourselves. So the reason that we stay getting better and better is because we demand it of ourselves. It's not just, it's not really. So when he talks about outside noise, when he talks about comparison and contrast to others, yeah, you can compare. Media can compare. Other teams can compare themselves to Georgia, but Georgia compares itself to Georgia. And I think that's also what is has been a formula for winning because every year you want to make sure that you do as good as, if not better, than the group before you. So, yeah, I, I think that there are a lot of things that are working there because they know how to work their system. Jarvis, what about you? What are the takeaways from Saturday's game? Or to Brent's point, just the takeaway overall as you step back from the regular season. I have to go big picture also because you think about the job that Mike Bobo has done, you know, with this offense and the coaching job he's done. Like you almost got to think like, okay, this guy is going to have an opportunity to be a head coach. Maybe not this year, but when he's ready, he's going to be able to go back into that fall. If that's something that he wants to do. If he wants to. Yeah, Yeah. if he wants to. Yeah. (laughs) If I'm him. I'm staying where I'm at, where I yeah, am. Yeah, you might. It, four, it's a nice four, life nine, you got, right? Keep coaching with my boy and everything like that. So, and, and continue to work with these four and five star cats, man, and keep pumping these boys out to the NFL. So, I, but, you know, I will stick around for that for sure. But I just, like, when you think of like the projected starters, they've only had played one game together on offense. And essentially, they found out that they have seven guys who can start for any offensive line in the entire country, right? So, you know, and then just be able to, it's the versatility that they preach with their guys and and Xavier Trust and how he's been able to step in in multiple spots up and down the offensive line due to injuries and stuff like, it just, it just amazes me what the type of job that Mike Bobo has been able to do. And Kirby Smart as well, but I, I think that, you know, Mike Bobo came in here with a little bit of, you know, a little angst, you know, from the from the fan base, right? Because everybody thought, oh, yeah, Kirby just hired his homeboy and all that stuff and everything like that. They probably should have did a, a nationwide search and all that. But I'm, I'm glad Kirby Smart didn't do that because Mike Bobo has come in here and he's done exactly what he came here to do. Because 
it, it, when you think about when he came in as an analyst, when Tom Unkin was the OC, he was humble. He said it himself. He was like, hey, man, I'm coming here to learn. I want to learn how to be a better coach. And when you think about that, that just – at that age, where he is in his career and what he's already already accomplished, he's an accomplished offensive coordinator. For if, if people don't know, and for him to come in and say something like that and just say, you know, Kirby Smart is equal, like they played together. So it's just like for him to say, you know what, I'm gonna come down to come down to Athens. I'm gonna I'm gonna come down here. Todd Munkin is the OC. I'm not coming here to be offensive coordinator. I'm just coming down here to learn. That just goes to show you like the type of culture that's down that Kirby Smart has built down there. And it's just been a beautiful thing to watch this year. Indeed. And I'm going to kind of jump the gun because you guys kind of went big picture. So I'm going to go big picture and go to uh, something that Kirby Smart said recently. I'll give you guys the quote and then we'll come back to the question. The one thing I can control as a coach is how we sustain, how we retain. Our retention and our ability to sustain is incredible. We've got a great footprint to recruit from. Unbelievable administration that supports what we want to do. And it's not easy, guys. Like, it's hard to win. And I don't appreciate that sometimes until you're talking to the opposing coach before the game, they say, man, it's it's hard to do what y'all have done. It is hard. And so going back to kind of piggybacking on what you were saying, Brett, how hard is it when you look across the landscape, not just of what's going on in college football today, but when you look across the whole of college football, like I mentioned, the Nebraska days of dominance, how hard is it to do what Kirby Smart has been able to do in Georgia with that program and sustain it across time? It's unprecedented. And in terms of the hard, I guess you could say sort of hardness, it's it's unfathomable, really. In yeah. today's college football with Transfer Portal, with NIL, with in essence and free agency, because I think the portal was about to go absolutely bonkers with people saying, hey, just all right, who wants to be, who wants to pay to me, help me or have me play for them? I think right. that all of when you combine all that recruiting, the constant nature of it, like the fact that you're going to play that game and then two weeks later signing is the first signing, all of it put together. It's insanity. But I will say this, all of what you said and everything that you see with the Georgia program, it starts with him. Yes. Yes. He is one of one from a maniacal, prepared, competitive drive standpoint. Mm -hmm. And the, the only way, the only way you get this is the standard with which he individually sets, because if you don't fall in line, you are now the black sheep Yeah, of the, in essence, family in, in, in the Buttsmere building, because his work ethic, his drive, his attention to detail is better than anybody else's. It just yeah. is. And you're dealing with 18, 18 to 22 year olds. Like I've seen, I've played basketball with him. Like he's maniacal. He's coaching in a basketball game. He hadn't played in months, like or done things. And he, it's just, it's who he is. And yeah. that, it's and that's why, yeah. and that's what it is. And, and that's why it's so difficult because you can't replicate his level of insanity and attention to the detail. Yeah. And I think two points that you make that need to stand out as well. When we talk about not just Nebraska, Brent, but even the run that Alabama had, most of that run was before the transfer portal really was instituted and took off. That run was completely done before NIL. So yeah, Kirby is doing something. And, and let's think about it as well. Now we're in a space where players even more so feel like they can take to Twitter, they can take to social media and talk about whatever they want. So if you take NIL, social media, and the transfer portal and put them all together and go for the last two or three dynasties, if you will, none of those dynasties had to deal with all of those things at the same time. And yet they're dealing with it, dealing with it effectively in Athens, even the tragedy that struck that program, they still handled it internally. It was still handled with class and dignity, but Brent, you're absolutely right. The dominoes fall the way they do because of who's at the top of the pyramid. Yep. Yeah. I think this like, Kind of to add to what Brent said, like I really feel like this is what everyone wants to attain. Like Texas, yeah. Texas AM paid $76 million just to try to get to this, right? Like to get to to figure out like, okay, who's the next guy? You know, they hire Mike Elko, who I feel he'll probably do a, a solid job there. You know, if you can get Duke the nine wins, like, hey, you you can work some magic. So I think that, you know, this is 
this level is it's, it's gonna be hard to attain. Like I hope Texas A&M didn't hire that that that, that man thinking that they're gonna do what do what Kirby does because Kirby, like you said, he's one of one, and for to be able to operate within all this insanity because we got Prime up here talking about we ain't paying no players, and I was like, all right, okay. You see all these, he can't start decommitting from your team <laughs> not too long after you said that because this is the way of the world. I just saw a report with Cameron Ward, the quarterback for Washington State. He has seven $1 million NIL <laughs> offers, like, reportedly. Like, even if half of that is true, that is absolutely insane for your coaches to have to deal with that. So, you know, like, yeah, for, for Kirby to be able to do it at the type of players that he's been getting consistently – yeah, like kudos to you, man. Like shout out to you. Whatever they pay you, it is well worth it. So yeah, it yeah. is extremely hard to answer your question. <laughs> yeah, it, indeed, indeed. And so when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about some of those other teams who are contending and trying to take Georgia off the mountain. But before we have that conversation, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about LinkedIn. All right, guys, I want to tell you about LinkedIn. This episode of the Atlanta Football Party is brought to you by LinkedIn. Go to LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnCollege. If you're trying to be and figure out, like, hiring the right person for your small business, you want to have as many top-tier candidates as possible to interview. I mean, that's just what it is. In order for your, your company to function correctly, that's what you need to do. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tool to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for the free. Yes, I said free. Yes. LinkedIn isn't just another job board, folks. We know you recognize the name. You understand who we are. They have a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which make it the best place to hire. Like, so this is the place that you need to go to to check out. And hiring is as easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy. In fact, that 86%, that's 86% of small business get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hours. So not only is it free, you're going to be able to find it very quickly and get the right person in there. So thankfully with LinkedIn, the process is intuitive, quick and easy. They have just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process even easier and quicker. So post your job for free on LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnCollege. That's LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnCollege to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Also, folks, I got to let you know. This episode is also brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel is the number one sports book in America, guys. And plus, if you haven't, I don't know if you noticed, but the NFL season is like halfway over. So I need you to go to fanduel.com slash locked on right now for new customers. They get $150 with any winning $5 money line bet. Let me say that again. New customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's 150 bucks if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. Don't be caught standing outside looking crazy. I'm telling you, you need to get in on the action right now. The app is super safe. It's super easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and much, much more. So visit FanDuel dot com slash locked on that's fanduel.com slash locked on l-o-c-k-e-d-o-n and kick off the nfl season because fanduel is the official sports betting partner of the nfl all right guys let's go between the hedges but we're going to go outside of the hedges as well because we know that there's a huge Huge weekend coming up of championship games, five games to be exact. You've got Washington, Oregon, Texas, Oklahoma State, Georgia, Alabama, Florida State, Louisville, and Michigan and Iowa. And this is really what's going to determine the college football playoff participants. And I say help determine it because you got the regular season win losses that could still loom large in how the decision is made as far as who plays on New Year's Day. So I'm going to go cut right to the chase because we're talking Georgia, right? So what in the world happens if Georgia does lose? Let's start right there. And Washington's kind of creeping up right there as well. And Michigan, but first things first, what happens if Georgia loses this game? Uh, I mean, 
Yeah, Pandora's know. box gets <laughs> open for the committee. I was thinking the same thing. They're gonna have because some long nights. The, well, the, they've. I, I think I saw something that someone who's been number one entering the last uh, sort of ranking. So if Georgia is number one when the rankings come out tonight, that person or that team has always been in the playoff. Mm. So mm. Like, that them going from one to say five would be a stretch. But yeah. I, I, I think they're not in. Like I think they're out if they lose. I think they have yeah. to win to be in. Uh, as much as the the data and, and some of those things and game control and all all that stuff, as much as those things talk, you're gonna as Texas takes care of business, Texas is gonna be like, hey, we beat Alabama at Alabama. You couldn't beat Alabama. Yeah. And then hey, Alabama, we beat you at your place. Peace yeah. out. Like yeah. that to and to me, that has to matter. Yeah. Like that massively now, but Florida State, I think, is the key. Florida yeah. State is the ultimate key to this. If they win and take care of business, I don't see the, any way on earth that they tell a 13-0 and Power 5 conference champion that you are not in the playoff. I just yeah. I can't, even independent of the QB situation. I don't but see it, how they say that. And it's interesting, Brent, because asking that question about Georgia, everybody has that hesitation because you're thinking, okay, number one team, if you lose the, the like you said, the history, has shown that you're still going to make it into that playoff so that potentially you can get to where you want to be, which is the championship game and win it all. So I'm going to ask this question. Style points matter. What if it's a 31 to 28 or a 24 to 20 type game, 24 to 21 missed field goal to send it to overtime? Does style points matter at all? What do you think, Jarvis? <laughs> I, I, I don't think so, because here's the thing. I, I really look at it from the standpoint of like, I think every year since this college football playoff has, you know, started, we've been able to look at conferences maybe like four or five games in and says it don't matter who the conference champion is for that for that conference, they're not getting it. And yeah. and I think the committee has had the benefit of that up until this year. So yeah. that's why I'm I hesitate saying, you know what, if Georgia wins, they'll probably still get. If Georgia loses, they still probably still get in. I, I can't say that. I can't say that yeah. with confidence. Like I never pay attention to their rankings. Yeah. But tonight I will pay attention and I will pay attention for one reason only. Not where Ohio State is, not where Texas versus Alabama, Oregon, none of that. I'm only paying attention tonight to see who's number one. Yeah. yeah. Because they could I could see them putting Michigan, Michigan one in that number one spot. Mm. Absolutely. Yep. And Absolutely. now it's yep. like, hey, like and you're just you're planting seeds for that. Yep. Now, yep. if Georgia's number one tonight, I think that that's a, that helps. Way, and Michigan's AD, yep. I think it's on the committee, right? Like, so like there's, who knows? There's but, that. But, yeah. There's neither that. here nor there. They were, they recuse <laughs> themselves from their own thing, but no, but I, I will say, I think that is the interesting piece tonight because yeah. Ohio state was number one at one point, you know, after they yep. beat Notre Dame, things like that. So, and they were two leading into this past weekend, you know, Michigan beats them, takes care of business. Do they then now move them to one, Mm -hmm. I, and, and I don't know that, that that's the most intriguing thing to me tonight. Yeah. Which is so unfortunate, Brent. So unfortunate, JD. Because real talk, the way that game was won at Georgia Tech wasn't so much. Hey, we. I mean, because they could have gone in there and blown them out. They could have put you know certain players in there, like kind of forced the issue. But I think the number one thing was, like you said, getting out of there without any major injuries. And if that meant that it was going to be a 31-23 slugfest looking game then they were okay with that because they walked away with the more important mission which was to have the players they wanted going into the sec championship game and possibly into the college football playoffs so it's kind of unfortunately unfortunate that they might get dinged whereas with michigan yeah you had to play your heart out like you had to beat ohio state so that you could be the the ruler and the owner of your own destiny so yeah it's but like you said it's always nitpicky and nudging around with with the folks on that college football playoff committee jarvis because sometimes you kind of don't know you know where things go or you look at like a washington and you say okay fine you know washington has an opportunity they're going to play oregon what if they lose what happens to them by the way yeah. and all this doesn't matter if georgia wins all of it is a, a moot point excuse me all of it and if you're a georgia <laughs> fan like and you win you want to be one and you want fsu to win and fsu to be four yes yeah, no, yes for sure. the and desires yes. of who you want to play that's who you want to play 
Yeah. And so I we don't have that angry, angry bird conversation from a couple years ago about seating. But go ahead, Jarvis. No, I was just going to say, like, I, I think you know, I think uh, uh, Brent makes a good point because like Florida State, like the committee is literally looking for a reason to <laughs> take them out of the out of out, out, of, the, oh, yeah. out of the ranking. Yeah, they are looking for a, uh, uh, any reason. Give us give us a reason. Give us a reason. We're going to try to get you up out of there because, like I said, at the end of the day, I know football and all that stuff, but, like, they want to know what team is going to bring the viewership. Like, yes. that's that's that, 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 that's what matters. Man. And a, t- a Florida State team without Jordan Travis at, at the quarterback spot? Yeah. Who wants to see that? I don't want to see that. <laughs> I mean, it is a brand, though. And, yeah, it is. Yeah. And if they play well, like, if – you know, another second week with the backup QB and they play, they play well and they handle Louisville. You can't, they have to put, you have to put them in. Yeah. Now if they barely beat Louisville or if obviously Louisville beats them, Florida State is done. But I will say, I think what will also be interesting about the rankings that come out tonight is <laughs> if say Georgia's one, Michigan's two, I could see Washington being or Washington three and then Oregon four. Yeah. In essence, them setting up a, Hey, Pac-12 champ, the winner is the three seed. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. But the biggest thing for me is do not, do not, if Alabama happens to beat Georgia, like to me, I think they, and FSU wins, and then you got Pac 12, like Texas should be in over about Alabama. If that's the deciding factor, Texas beat them. That has to matter. Texas beat them at their place. Like yeah. that has to matter. Yeah. Don't tell me it doesn't matter because, like, I could like if I'm a coach, they don't lose. I beat them. I beat them yeah. on their team on their field. <laughs> they don't exactly. lose. Kind of yeah, it should yeah. be. Yeah, right. It should be a no brainer. It should absolutely be a no brainer. One more question before we wrap up, guys. Just out of curiosity, who's the most and and you know this is assuming that this is a one. Well, you know it could go either way because it could be a one win team that loses in the title game, or it could be a one win team that walked into its championship game and won it. But who's your most likely one lost team to actually make the playoff? Jarvis, who do you think? Sorry. I would have to say probably Texas, right? You know, if we're talking mm-hmm. about a, a Armageddon type scenario, if Georgia <laughs> loses, you know, like I said, if Georgia, you know, if 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 Georgia loses, then you gotta look at the conversation saying, okay. I know Alabama is SEC champion. I know the SEC champion has basically been a, a play-in, a college football playoff play-in game for the past <laughs> ever since it started. Right. But uh, we beat them, <laughs> you know, like Brent brought up, like we beat them at their house. So yeah, that's kind of like where we need to be. Like if if Alabama win beats Georgia and y'all take Georgia out, like we have to be in this game. I I, I don't see you know a non uh, champion. No champion being in this game, you know, specifically talking about you know Georgia, because I, I feel like that's we've kind of moved. Away. I feel like they're trying to move away from that. Yeah, Oregon's the answer, I think, to me, because Oregon wins, I think they're in. Like they're avenging the only loss they had, which was a road loss. Now it's Central Field. Like to me, Oregon's the end. And by the way, that's also selfishly, I want to see Oregon win and get in, and I also also selfishly want to see FSU win again. Because on our UGA Sports podcast before the season, I had Georgia, Michigan, Oregon, and FSU as the playoff. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Personal, uh, nice to be right. You're on the record. It probably won't happen, but you know, <laughs> I do you have never know stranger that. things, Brent. Stranger things. When we come back, we're going to talk about keys to the game for Georgia. But first, before we talk about that, Jarvis is going to tell you guys a little bit about prize picks and subtext. Guys, this episode of the Atlanta Football Party is brought to you by Prize Picks. PrizePicks.com slash locked on college. PrizePicks.com slash locked on college is the website that you need to go to. Why I need to go to Jarvis? Because, like you know, the NBA season, NBA season is, is jumping off right now. And now you can pick combo projections across football and basketball from the special league. A league created specifically for a combo projection that includes two or more players from different sports or leagues. For example, you want to get LeBron James on, on the plus uh, or more? I'm telling you, you can even get Travis Kelsey to pair him off with that, right? And the 10 and a half combo of three points made plus receptions. Yeah, that's not that's simple math, folks. Don't look at me like that. I promise you. It's easy. All you got to do is go to prospect.com slash locked on college. Also, prospects offers a reboot policy where 
If you're, they are the only daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy. So if your player exits the game, the first half, and does not return the second, that player is rebooted. So yeah, I think you guys need to go right there, right now, and go to prospect.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Yes, locked on college for a first deposit match of $100. And all you got to do, guys, and remember this. Prospects is daily fantasy sports made easy. Also, let me tell you about Subtext. Join Subtext.com slash Locked On Sports Atlanta. Why well, I want to do that? Go to the website right now, and you're going to get a two-week trial. Two-week trial to say, hey, you're going to be able to get updates, breaking news, thoughts and stuff on the game, and also look, all 22 review sent directly to your phone. All you got to do is go to joinsubtext.com slash Locked On Sports Atlanta for you get a two-week free trial. And if you don't like the trial, you can just go on about your way. But if you do like it, it's just $4.99 a month to be a part of a Locked On Sports Atlanta insider. So go to the, go to the website right now, join, join subtext.com slash Locked On Sports Atlanta and become a Locked On Sports Atlanta insider today. All right, guys, keys to the game. We are, what, T-minus five days away from the big showdown here in Atlanta, Jarvis. What are the keys to the game for Georgia to get back to the college football playoff? I need those young linebackers, C.J. Allen and Raylan Wilson. Y'all need to grow up because Mr. Milrow is coming. He That is most, the most athletic quarterback that you probably have seen all year. And I'm talking about when you're talking about arm strength, the guy can sling it. So I think that this is the game where these young pups going to have to grow up. And we already know that a lot of times, you know, we've seen Georgia, you know, uh, in these college football playoffs, you know, obviously winning national championship in back to back years. You've had guys like Keely Ringo make these big plays. I think that it is going to be vital for guys like Malachi Starks to step up guy because you know he's been a little shaky from time to time throughout the year so and especially specifically with the tackling and um and everything so those are i think this defense this is a game where i feel like the defense is going to have to be out in the forefront because we've been talking about the offense all year and how great they've been right but i think glenn schumann and, and, and will muschamp co-defense coordinators for this team those guys are going to be drunk, pumping a lot of coffee in their system because they're going to have to figure out how to stop this young cat Indeed. What about you, Brent? What are your keys to Georgia taking this thing Saturday? I actually, I actually think since we've been talking about the offense all year, that the offense is actually the key. Now, in terms of specifics with that, one, can Georgia run its normal offense where the ball is out quickly, like had success in the run game, and then things with Carson Beck, like his average time to throw is quickest as in the FBS. Can they do that? Because guess what Alabama's really good at? Coverage. Their corners are – the best corner group they faced all season outside of Missouri, Caleb Downs, key at safety, really good in the secondary. Because I think if Georgia can function in a normal offense and the ball not be held on to longer, then Alabama's pass rush and their, you know, the elite pass rushers they have on the edge gets mitigated a little bit. Their overall pressure rate moves way down in terms of ranks in the power five in terms of quick pressure. They don't, it's because it's because their secondary is so good that allows those guys to really do work. So if Georgia functions if it's in its normal offense, run game, mix of play action, balls out quick, I think they get to 30. I don't think Alabama can get to 30 points mm-hmm. unless you help them, unless you give them turnovers and give them the football, pick six, things like that. I don't think Alabama gets to 30 points. So if Georgia dictates the pace of the game with their offense and puts Milrow in a situation where it's on his arm, I think this game gets handled and potentially, by the way, I think potentially gets into the double digit territory if that happens. Yeah. Yeah. I, it, it, <laughs> I, I'm liking would, the boxing. Yes. I'm liking it a lot. The more and I, I watch, say, the more I feel that. Yeah, yeah. No. Right. And it's interesting because I can recall times where some, the same, I think the line right now is about at six. And I was thinking to myself, eh, I got a sneaking suspicion this might be a. And when I say blowout, meaning, like you said, a double digit, like two touchdowns, I wouldn't be shocked only because I'm thinking, I don't know, sometimes it's a weird thing, but it still feels like Georgia's underappreciated, underrated, under the radar. I don't care what you want to call it. It's it's a weird thing, but that's just how I feel like sometimes they get. But here's the other thing. If it's a tight game, 
and it comes down to the wire, whether it is resetting at halftime, it, it's a chess match I think Kirby Smart can win. And it's a chess match that I think Kirby Smart will win. I think they both have chess pieces, but I trust that Kirby Smart now has the, the mass. He's the mastermind of the chess game. And I feel like he can, along with his coordinators, get this done should it come down to the wire. Like Jarvis said, the, the ultimate chess piece is Milrow. Like, yeah. because of his, like, he's Kendall Milton's size with 4 4 speed. Yeah. So when we talk about the power of Milton, like he's that size with, and it's a scrambling part. It's not designed. They haven't really done a ton of design. Right. It's right. it's true scrambles where you think you, know, you got everybody covered. You think you got him wrapped up. And then all of a sudden he's 20 yards down the field. Yeah. I got, I got, I got to say this guys, like a lot of the, the, the uh, defensive lineman gods, you know, lowercase G, uh, they will, they try, they, they talking to me right now. Like this is the type of game that I feel Michael Williams can really put his stamp on his NFL projections right now because this is we've been getting a glimpse of these past few games. Like we've been seeing him. Like okay, this yeah. new Tennessee game. Like okay, yeah, this is this is the Michael Williams I've been asking for. You know, right. throughout this season. So I think this is a game that I think thirteen kind of establishes himself and say, you know what, this is. I'm a, I'm about to I'm about to show you guys what time it is and and, and we're gonna about to get ready to go into this playoff and because we got we got business to handle. If nothing else, it's gonna be a fun watch on Saturday. Listen, we appreciate you watching us as well, liking us and subscribing on YouTube to the Lockdown channel because, like we said, you want good dogs talk, you can get it right here, no matter where else you go. This is the best place to be for that local action talk in Georgia. So again, we appreciate you guys stopping by today and don't forget to stop by the Hawks postcast later tonight.